Okay, guys, right, so this is the um, section about uh, strumming. So what we're going to do, do here is we're going to imagine that this uh, sheet of paper here is a bar. Uh, and uh, like I've said in the classes before, is that a bar is essentially a container for a number of beats. And that's what we want to do. We want to think of it as bookends for a number of beats. And because each edge here, we're thinking of these as being the bar lines themselves, what we need to do is we need to know what kind of beats we can actually fit in that bar. Uh, the standard sort of setup is four beats per bar for rock and pop. Most stuff that you're ever going to play, it's, it's actually going to in, uh, involve playing um, <laughs> um, four beats to the bar. Uh, just looking for my ruler here. I might try and do this neat. It might not be neat. It might be horrendous. But here's the thing. So here's the key to strumming. This is if you know um, um, what you are doing count wise with uh, we've got four beats, um, then it makes sense to know where to actually strum. This is the key because most people don't realize where they have to strum what beat it is that you strum on and what i'm going to do is i'm going to give you very explicit directions on what you need to do to to strum correctly this will set you up for learning some of the the most basic strums but the most musical strums because that's the problem that most people encounter is that they strum and it's stiff and it isn't musical at all so let's Let's have a uh, have a look at how to make that musical, and we'll uh, put some other ideas in there as well. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to divide this bar up um, because we've got four beats in this bar. We'll think just thinking about how many different ways we can actually divide it, and we're actually going to use some standard notation. This is the same stuff that uh, all musicians use: piano, singers, flute, trombone, whatever you want to think about uh, uh, musically they use this system as well uh, i'm going to use um the, the the kind of old money terms you know uh, of minims and semi briefs and quavers and those kind of things but i'm also going to use the sort of jazzy um uh, us version of uh, the language that is used to describe these divisions uh, it makes more sense to me to use those because that's the way drummers talk and drummers are in charge of the beat uh, and therefore we're talking about rhythm so it makes more sense for to use the drummers way um, so here we go so this bar now what we're going to do the first uh, thing we're going to do is we need to look at the value that takes up the whole of the bar and the symbol for that is a circle um, what this circle denotes, it's it's um, called the whole note, and that is what um, drummers would call that. That's the the American, that's the U.S. Uh, um, way uh, nom nomenclature for that. The way of uh, uh, the name to call that. So that's the whole note there. In sort of the old way of doing things, the the old money way. Um, I would call that a semi breathe but a semi breathe to me it's very abstract it doesn't say what it what it does really the whole note version it does it actually says that the, this note if you strum this note it lasts the duration of it it lasts for the whole count of four so if you look at this one two three four that's the whole of the count now in guitar, what we encounter is we we encounter in standard notation a lot of um, uh, legacy things from uh, violin and other stringed instruments. And what we tend to get is we get these symbols here. And those bear no reference to actually playing guitar because this symbol here actually means the, the, the hilt of the bow of a violin or a viola or a cello and this indicates the tip these are what we traditionally use to denote that this is going to be a downstroke and this is going to be an upstroke i think it's far simpler to use the letter d for downstroke and u for upstroke i think that makes a, a whole lot of sense but 
you can think of those as being synonymous so that would be a downstroke and that would be an upstroke that's a good way to look at it now when we come back to the whole note here we can see that what we do for the whole note we would play a downstroke on the first beat of the bar and that downstroke that chord or note or whatever it is that you're playing would last for the whole duration of the count of four so that's that's simple enough i think that's pretty simple enough and and i find that if you want to to uh, try a chord to use this word if you if you just play an e minor chord it's the e, that's the easiest chord to play is an e minor chord if you put your fingers on an E minor chord and just strum that E minor chord for a count of four, what you do is you strike the strings on one, let them ring for the whole of the four. Right, okay, so here's the next part of this. And we're always dividing down. So if I take that count of four and I divide it down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this into some more cells here. What I get is I take my original symbol. Now, it might sound a bit strange, but I imagine that that looks like a cake. And if that's the cake, there's a cake with a knife that's just cut it in half. And because it's cut it in half, what happens is we get to a light cake, right? So here we go, there's one, there's two, there's beat three, there's beat four. <clears throat> but because we've split it in two, what we're gonna do is we're going to play the downstroke on one and the downstroke on three. Just going back to the naming, the naming of this note, if we were going to call this note something, well, if this is the whole note and we've cut it in half, then it makes sense that we just call this the half note. If we want to think of it the way we learnt it in school or in music class, it's sometimes known as a minim. Now, that to me sounds uh, very much uh, an abstract thing. If you want to think of uh, um, the Muppets where it goes minim minim, uh, do 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 do, you could do that, <laughs> uh, and and that kind of takes it completely away from the context that it should actually be used for. Now, if we take that E minor chord and we look at that E minor and we were to play that count of one, two, three, four, what would happen is we would strum on one, so we'd go one, two, three, four, and those would be downstrokes on your E minor chord. So just use your, that E minor chord, one, two, three, four, down, two, three, four. And that downstroke lasts for a duration of two beats, and this downstroke lasts for a duration of two beats also. So this moves us on to the next division that we're going to do. And this is one of the nicest drawings I've done for a while. Um, if we take that half note, take the half note and we fill it in there to show that we've, we've cut it up. And again, we can see the, the juicy jam filling inside because it's a cake. And I like cakes. We know that. We've established that already, hopefully. Here we've got one of these in each of these columns that I've just divided it down into. So you can see here, this is a whole note, this is a half note. What do you think this one's called? <laughs> yeah, you're right, it's a quarter note. But we also know the quarter note, I'll just do that there, we know the quarter note as the crotchet. Now the crotchet, it sounds like a kind of knitting uh, um, thing that you can do. Um, so if if you play the crotchet there, what we could we look at, we can see that that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four there, uh, and 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 it makes sense. It is almost it's like maths. There's a fraction element to it. If we take that there, then what we're actually going to do here is we're going to put a downstroke on each one of those quarter notes stroke crotchets there. So if I put that there. And what that gives me is if this is my uh, pulse, my tempo is like that, do it slowly, like that, then down, 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 down. On that E minor chord, just have a go at that. One, two, three, four, down, 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 down. And I'd actually recommend switching between counting and then thinking to yourself, well, let's do, let's think of it in, in how you uh, um, apply the plectrum to the strings. So just downstrokes, 
down, 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 down. So you could do that. Now we're going to divide it again. And once you get this and you start to get this, it, it, everything becomes very, very easy. So we've got the quarter notes here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now to take, take what we do is if we want to change this symbol every time we, we're moving along and I know there's some of you out there that are already thinking I know what the next note value is going to be and, and that kind of shows you how much more logical this system is. So what we do is we take our quarter note and then what we do is we put a flag uh, or a stem on it, it depends which what, where you want to think of it and then what we do is we take that and we just fill all these with those cell, those cells there. You can see, and even if you look, you've got the ratio of two to one of those. So if we do this here, this becomes an adventure in watching me drawing. If I put that there, then one is still here in the first, if, if you look at the two divisions that we have here, one is still right at the front there. If we look at this here, then two is going to be right at the first one that you, you have in the pair. Because you see, dividing down, that is the first one in that pair. Same applies on three. Same applies on four. Now, what helps is, as you were strumming, you would have been on the quarter notes, you would have noticed that it was easier if you counted along, because that helps you to know where you are. And the same thing applies when we get down to these notes, and these notes, as you probably already figured out by now, these are called eighth notes. Um, the old money term for those is quavers. Now, if you're in the UK, then a quaver is a cheesy crisp. Uh, or a chip uh, it is so so those two are, those are an item of food so it it's very abstract but like I say I much prefer this idea of whole note half note quarter note eighth note it makes life just so much easier especially when you're trying to communicate with a drummer um, if we look at the um, the uh, uh, additional beat that we end up here we need a way to name that and we need a way to be able to say it uh, as well because if you can say it you can play it and that's the rule if you can say it you can play it and what we're going to do is we're going to use this and it's not add it's not plus it's it's and so if we put that and there we fill this with an and and we have an and there and we have an and there then what we'll notice is that these uh, main beats are still downstrokes those guys there are still downstrokes and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to utilize something that it's very tricky to if you notice it when you play these quarter note strums and you're going down 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 this might throw you if you do it and you try and catch it what you're actually doing is you're going downstroke miss on the upstroke the hand Re returns up to uh, above the strings the excursion of the plectrum returns above the strings um, and what you do is you actually do a missed stroke and that's kind of inefficient really I mean if you want the gaps the, the duration of the note and the gaps and everything else then that then it isn't efficient but if you were thinking uh, from the terms of just the movement of the picking hand then it's slightly inefficient so what we actually want to do is avoid those missed strokes so it really it goes down miss down miss down miss down miss which is bizarre to think of it in that context but this will make sense instead of missing what we're actually doing is is we are looking to catch the strings on the upstroke when we catch these strings on the upstroke it's very very important to notice that the downstroke and the upstroke feel the same there should be no resistance or catching of the strings with the plectrum that can be altered by the angle of your hand I'll give some practical demonstrations in further videos um, uh, to, to couple with this one because this is going to be quite in depth is this one um, but you'll notice so you'll notice that that down upstroke thing you want it to feel fluid right so on to the next one so this is the thing now if we're going oops if we're going one two three four one two three four one two three 
four. Right, and I keep that going. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and down up, 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 down up. That should give you an idea of what you should be verbalizing and what you should be thinking in your head. If you verbalize it, like I say, if you say you can play it, if you verbalize it at first, you'll get good and it becomes one of those things that you do unconsciously. I'm going to go down to the next division. It's going to get scruffy here. Um, I will be attaching a PDF of a very, very pretty and nicely laid out version of this uh, that you can print off and uh, reference. Um, so here, we're going down to the next division. <clears throat> you might be thinking to yourself, oh, well, you know, uh, well, what is it after this? You know, uh, it, or have you already worked it out? Because this is the thing. It's potential, potentially, that you've worked out. So what we start off with is this eighth note or quaver. And to show that we've divided it, we just put another tail on. Now, I, I am going to do this. I'm going to talk you through this. Um, I'm going to draw these these ones out. If my Hopefully, if my pen doesn't run out here. Um, I'm going to draw these all the way across here and what these do is these are played exactly the same but what happens is we have twice the speed this is twice the speed and these notes are 16th notes we, oh, we'll get there alright There we go, we've done it. So this is, these are 16th notes. It makes sense. And and even with just that little bit of information there, if these divided again, can you guess what the next division of note would be? I think you can. These are, because they're a quaver and they are cut in half, these are called semi-quavers. There's a, there's a funny um, way of looking at semi-quavers and... And those kind of things that that uh, might do in another video in the future but same thing applies here this is one this is still going to be two this is still three this is still four so you can see the notes are divided up the the pulse the um, the accents for these notes fall very very explicitly in in these spots the same thing happens here where we have two with this divider this ratio of two to one there so that is the and and we're going to call this the and here so here there's the and so this is going to be the and here this is the and so we're going to put the and there this is the and we're going to put the and there but we need another way to, to uh, uh, verbalize this so that we can say it as we play it and what we're going to use is we're going to use two letters we're going to use two uh, um, uh, vowels because vowels are easier to repeat than consonants so one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. If you've ever done the uh, the these semiquaver sixteenth notes, it, you know, uh, in part, as part of your musical studies, you might have heard somebody say Coca Cola for sixteenth notes. The because the the uh, C's are terminal consonants, yeah. K -k -k. If you say Coca-Cola for long enough, your mouth will dry out and you'll actually need a Coca-Cola. So just be mindful of that fact. But here, if we say one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a, it's a little bit more flexible for your lips and your mouth to, to, to get around. So that's how we funny this. I've just paused the video and I just filled this in because you don't want to see me spending hours doing this. But the idea that I hope you get is that if we look at the beat that's just going at this tempo and the whole note would go one one so you strum a downstroke on the one and like i say that e minor chord's nice and easy to be able to do that so the duration of the chord lasts that if you look at the half note then it goes down down one two three four doing it as the quarter notes it goes one two three four down 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 
Now if we keep that pulse going, that beat going there, we get one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and yeah and that would be down up down up down up down up we want to make sure that those upstrokes feel the same as the downstrokes nice and even nothing catching no friction then when we get to the semi quavers we want to be able to count it one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a down up 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 it's a little bit harder is that so if we stick with that then what we'll see is you'll be able to strum all these different use all these different rhythmic uh um ideas here to create bigger patterns and other strumming patterns with this idea the semi quavers the 16th note you're probably not going to get into that uh, right now, but it's a useful thing for you to be able to understand. Uh, we'll catch up on the next video where I'll start. I'll talk about the binary pulse and uh, making the strums more musical. Okay, thank you.